Greetings my friends! This is Yanis Kambatskaris with Apocalyptic Nights and today we will talk about what is better to do MMA or to do Krav Maga. Now as a very short introduction to the people who don't know what MMA or Krav Maga is, Krav Maga is a self-defense uh, combat uh, style that uh, is, uh, d has been developed in Israel and uh, is supposed to be like the most efficient self-defense system uh, of today and uh, MMA is cage fighting. Very few rules, uh, almost no rules and uh, everything goes and yeah, realistic conditions, realistic opponents. So uh, I recently had this question asked by a girl, a friend of mine in Sweden, who uh, uh, was actually worried about some... she had, a, she had an incident about uh, somebody attacking her and uh, she got saved by another guy that was nearby and uh, she would like to do something to protect herself in the future. And she asked me what should she, what sh should she do? Like she should do uh, MMA or Krav Maga, which is what everybody suggested to her. Some people told her do Krav Maga, some people told her do MMA. Uh, I have done both Krav Maga and MMA and uh, other martial arts such as Ninjutsu Aikido for m mostly Ninjutsu for many years. And uh, I have to say that uh, I suggested to her without a second thought to do MMA for self-defense, not for cage fighting, but for self-defense. And uh, this may sound like self-contradictory, I mean, you want to learn something that is uh, self-defense, why not go to the self-defense thing and go to the MMA thing that is cage fighting, which is a sport, you know, it's not real. The answer is uh, what I would like to talk about today. Uh, it is simple and complicated at the same time, because <clears throat> You know, with Krav Maga, there is a problem that exists in every martial art. Krav Maga is still a martial art like all the others, just uh, a little more realistic. It's not completely realistic, it's a little more realistic, and I will explain why. The reason is because Marcus Aurelius had said, the philosopher, uh, the philosopher emperor of uh, Rome, had said that uh, life resembles more wrestling than dancing. It looks more like wrestling than like dancing. Uh, if you think about it, because you know dancing doesn't take into account the friction, the you know the the resistance of the other forces around you, of the other people, of the other uh, objects of your environment doesn't take that into account too much, uh, or at all, I should say. Uh, but uh, wrestling does take it, does take into account that there is a guy who is going to exert uh, opposing force, like full force against you and you will find a way to deal with that. That's how life is. It has uh, forces that oppose what you want to do a lot of times. It's not like dancing, it's not like uh, everybody trying to smoothly pass next to each other without, like with a minimum resistance. It's not like that unfortunately. The problem is like, that most martial arts, if not all of them, uh, today practice uh, their martial art with the concept of uh, almost no resistance from the other side because they do uh, katas like I strike, he strikes, uh, but everything is controlled, everything is with the same style it's not something that will cause you problem and whoever is faster or whoever is more accurate wins in a karate contest for instance uh, soft touch uh, whoever is more accurate and faster and touches the other person faster wins in a real combat, the other person will touch you like that, it will be soft, will not knock you out, and you will knock them out with one punch. Because they didn't learn how to take a punch, which is contrast, which is uh, full force cont contrast, and they didn't, know, they didn't learn how to punch hard enough to knock somebody out. They learned how to punch fast enough to hit them, just that, to get a point. So, the thing with Krav Maga uh, that I noticed when I was training with it, is that... Uh, uh, you know, the, the instructor will show you some techniques and people will try practice them. And I would see high level people, like, you know, they have levels, like in our, other martial arts they have belts, in Krav Maga they have levels because they have to find a way to get money every time you examine yourself somehow. So they invented levels. Cool. Um, so there, are, there were some high level people that could be beaten by just somebody who is not even doing martial arts. Uh, did they learn enough techniques? Yes, they did. Uh, that's not a good thing though. Because, for example, a wrestler will learn like 10 tricks, 10 techniques, maybe. 
and uh, sometimes even fewer. Somebody can know five techniques and they can work for everybody and they can beat everybody from the weakest to the strongest wrestler in the world. Some techniques can beat all of them. And there are a million techniques more, a million. And I've been doing Ninjitsu for many years, I know what I'm talking about. A million techniques that do not work to anybody who is from a strength level and up. So, really, what's the point of learning them? What's the point of knowing something that uh, is going to work to in a small fraction of people and that creates also more confusion in, your, in yourself? Because when the situation arises, you don't know what to choose. You don't know what to choose. You have a million options and uh, most of them, the vast majority of them, don't work to a strong person. And uh, even if it's a weak person, you, you're, well, you're like, what should I do now? So if you knew like one technique, that's what you would do. If you knew two techniques, you could quickly assess that, uh, okay, this is better in this situation, that is better in that situation, I choose this one. And do it. With three, it becomes more difficult. With a hundred, it becomes very difficult to choose. So you naturally will do the one you trained uh, the most. So if you trained a hundred techniques, you will not be good in any of them. You will not be on a, on a champion level in any of them. So you will perform them, it will be ill-performed. No matter how uh, uh, good you are, if you know 100 techniques and you spend some time in each of them to, you know, get to know them, you don't know what, to, uh, you're not good enough to do it. You're not good enough to do even the one you choose, uh, you know, to 100% efficiency. So, that's the reason why in MMA, for example, they did find out the hard way through contests in a cage, the techniques that work and the techniques that don't work. And the, the, the MMA fighters of today in MMA gyms, they just practice the techniques that work. They don't practice, uh, you know, superficial techniques that don't work, that work out to almost any, nobody. They practice things that work to the weak and that work to the strong. And that's why the training is better for self-defense in the street. To that comes another added element of uh, the way that they train in each discipline. In Krav Maga, as well as in almost all the other martial arts, they do have the feeling that you will uh, do such a powerful strike that you learn to the opponent and you will like uh, liquidate them, like you will uh, evaporate them. They will vanish like thin air, thin air. That they, they will instantly, you know, fall down in pain and uh, call for help or whatever, I don't know. They, they have some fantasies like that. In reality, this isn't how it works. It needs work to put somebody out. It's not happening just because you learned a fancy technique. It doesn't happen because you know where to strike or how fast to strike. You need to actually apply a specific force against another force in a specific amount, in a specific time and place. All those coordinates have to be okay in order for you to knock somebody out or to disable them in some way. So, when I see people practicing Krav Maga thinking that uh, they're better than uh, an MMA fighter because they learn how to knee the groin and uh, kneeing the groin is not allowed in MMA. To me that's uh, completely ridiculous because first of all it's happening by accident. That tells you something. If it happens by accident then it can totally happen on purpose. In MMA fights it happens by accident all the time. And MMA fighters who are like tough as nails, they're like the toughest individuals on the planet, they need sometimes up to five minutes to recover from an accidental knee strike uh, to the groin or a kick to the groin. Th and they wear steel caps, you know, they wear caps. They wear protective steel caps and they still get hurt. Does that tell you something? It means that, uh, you know, let's put it this way. If I totally have to be kicked or kneed in the groin by somebody and I have to choose between a Krav Maga fighter and a Mai Tai kickboxer, believe me, I will choose the Krav Maga guy 100 times out of 100. Because, yeah, the Krav Maga guy, Krav Maga guy need, knows how to knee the groin or to kick the groin, but so does the other guy. The other guy can do much uh, more difficult things, he's trained with much more resistance and uh, against much heavier punching bags and kicking bags. And, you know, he, he can kick much harder. He can kick much harder and he can totally place his shot wherever he wants. He can do it, he can place it at the groin. 
And if he kicks me, I will probably not uh, see the light of day again. I don't know, or maybe some parts of me won't. But <laughs> if the other guy kicks me, sure it will hurt. Sure it may uh, have me down riding in pain, but it will still be much better. So the argument that they train such uh, lethal techniques is not valid. And finally, the last argument uh, that uh, people have uh, in favor of training Krav Maga instead of MMA is that, uh, oh, you learn other things, such as disarming knives, disarming uh, guns, disarming bazookas, I don't know, tanks, disarming everything, disarming countries, countries like nuclear armaments. Um, in reality, uh, I'd, I'd hate to say that uh, the techniques that they show are not probably going to work, are, are probably not going to work to somebody who is determined and not a complete retard. Because, for example, they learn how to uh, disarm a guy with a gun, and the guy with a gun is like this, to your head, right to your head, and you're like, oh, okay, you see, like that, and then you grab it and uh, raise it up, and then you twist it, and you know, punch him, kick him, whatever. If I had, if I was a criminal, which I'm not, but if I was, and I wanted to uh, do something, uh, like threaten somebody with a gun, I would not just put it against his head. I would keep a distance. And what's more, I wouldn't do it like that. I was in uh, the Renaissance and, you know, in a, in a duel, pew, with him like this. But I would just do it the other way. I'll have the gun as far back as I could, in a, in a safe distance, aiming at him. And, uh, you know, when he makes a move to grab it from that distance, I can shoot him before he does anything. And I can move back. I'm ready to move back and gain some space to keep firing if I need to. So. In reality, it's not like that. Of course, there are some techniques that work. There are, there are a lot of techniques for knife uh, or for gun in Krav Maga that uh, I'm pretty certain in real situations against somebody who is not a complete moron, they wouldn't work. But there are some that would work. But the thing is, you don't need to go to a school for years just to learn those. You can just learn them isolated. You can just check YouTube videos, you can just uh, find them train them a little bit, it's just you know, a single technique, just learn that single technique with somebody else, with a friend or, you know, on your own if you can and uh, just, you know, learn it. It's, it's just one technique or maybe it's another then, it's another, it's like, not many, it's not many and it doesn't have to be many, like I said before. So, I'd like to hear your uh, arguments and uh, reasons for choosing MMA or Krav Maga or maybe something else, I don't know, maybe you want to talk about something else. I'd, I'd be really interested to hear it in the comments. Of course, the comments are going to be moderated because I love when people disagree with me in a nice way, in a respectful way. I love that. I love that, really. Like, because not when they do it for the sake of disagreeing, but when they really offer something to the table. Like, they, they say something that maybe I didn't think about because I'm human, you know, I'm not perfect. Uh, I have my opinion, but maybe sometimes I didn't think about something. Uh, but uh, I really don't like it when people try to impress people or to just draw that attention by just being aggressive or by, by being offensive. There is no reason for that, you know, really. And uh, there is no re reason for anybody to spend uh, even a second of his time for those people. So I'd like uh, to ask you to keep, to keep it respectful and uh, of course I will be moderating the comments. And uh, I hope that uh, I will see some really nice points in those comments. So this is Yanis Kambatskaris with the Apocalyptic Nights. Thanks for watching and I'll see you the next time.